New York State has more coronavirus cases than France or South Korea as infections soar to 15,168. To reiterate what Cuomo said, they have the most positives because they are able to have the most tests available. More tests equals more positives and that's a good thing. Many states would have much higher numbers if testing was available. People need to assume they're already infected. Do not go out of your way for a test. A lady from Mass. Fucking flew to China for tests and got her ass arrested overseas. Do not be as stupid as that lady. Imagine if other areas tested. We have no idea how many people are positive because so few tests are available. We could easily be off by a factor of 10. Edit, a word. These news agencies really need to stop using words like sore in headlines. It's only responsible. Just say it reached X amount as testing increases. The numbers vary depending on which site or source you're consulting. Many sites are having a hard time keeping up with daily totals, and many people are symptom-free. Live science shows either 12,324 or 11,710 or 8,522 depending on the map or page you happen to be on. As a pharmacist in MI, it's because people won't stay in their fucking houses. We have delivery and a drive through Yet I see the same people here every day just meandering around the store. I can only imagine what every other store is like. I left NYC 15 days ago after a week's stay. Currently being in self-quarantine because sore throat, cough. No test available for me, as New York is not considered a dangerous region, or, was when I left. Stay home. Stay safe. They are also doing more testing than a lot of other places. I am in Rochester and we have had a spike in cases. There aren't enough masks for the hospital staff, RGH is due to run out in two days time. I have two masks, one for me and the wife, whether they do anything to help I don't know. But it gives me some comfort. They have drive through testing but from what I have read they just send you away without testing you. There aren't enough kids to test so the gravest get tested, or at autopsy. We could have thousands and thousands more right now. Everything is closed except essential business. My wife and I have only gone to work, I am outdoors usually by myself and my wife is a nurse. I only worked 8 hours last week and may get 16 hours in this week. Work is dead, as it should be. We ran to the grocery store at 7 a.m. today and picked up a few things. Surprisingly Wegmans was well stocked of most items. Kudos to them and all the others who are working to keep the flow going. And for the most part of what I can see in my neighborhood people are taking this seriously. We are scared to death as I am 62 and she is 59. In another thread I offered of how sick we both were over a month ago. New York City is one place I would not want to be right now. It is going to get much worse. I am not smart enough to complain or offer any advice. I just want anyone that reads this to see my first-hand experience so far. God bless to all. One of the companies responsible for creating a quick and efficient test in S. Korea is willing to offer it to the U.S. and is claiming to be able to produce 1 million tests per day. FDA hasn't approved their test yet. Just gonna say in response to the many comments in here about shortages of PPE that we should not be bailing out the airlines right now. Bail out workers. The rest of that money, and any other corporate money that doesn't directly go to displaced workers, should be going exclusively toward testing and PPE. Worry about corporate CEOs later. If we lose our healthcare workers because of inadequate supplies of PPE, we are fucked. If we lose patients because we don't have enough ventilators or ICU beds, we are fucked. I don't think one dime of money should go toward anyone who doesn't need it to survive at this point until and unless every single hospital and worker has what they need to save everyone and keep themselves safe. Edit, thank you for the gold. You can't compare total confirmed cases. What you can compare is total deaths and then you have to take some factors into consideration. I.e., how many old people live in the area, are some of the deaths caused by overfilled hospitals, and how many people have existing health problems in the area. It's now simple, 
but total confirmed cases means nothing. Different countries have different rules for testing, some only test cases with severe symptoms. Wow it's almost like if you don't test people you can keep your infected numbers low. And when you actually eventually do test people you realize the virus has been replicating throughout your community. This isn't a surprise. 15,168 cases, but they still have only 80 deaths. Louisiana has 20 deaths albeit having only around 500 confirmed cases. New York is not the epicenter of the coronavirus epidemic in the U.S. Other states are a lot worse off when looking at deaths per capita. Don't let the confirmed cases statistics mislead you. As a New Yorker, and one that works construction in NYC that was deemed essential for some stupid fucking reason, I think it's safe to assume we all have it at this point, and it's just going be a case of how bad are your symptoms gonna be. Two weeks ago yesterday, I went to a friend's engagement party, yesterday he tested positive for COVID. I'm not showing any symptoms, but I told my boss to fuck off I'm not going back to work for a while. I don't want to spread it if I have it and I wouldn't want to be out in public if the symptoms start showing. We saw a gigantic spike overnight in positive cases. And a small increase in fatalities from the disease. The country is currently at a 1% mortality rate, but it seems that there are so many undiagnosed cases of this disease. I think that New York State has such a seemingly high rate because they're actually rapidly testing. Test kits are required for repeat tests. Like docs, grocers etc. need to test it every day to stop asymptomatic spread. While focusing high amounts of tests in New York which has valid reasons for doing so, which has a positive test ratio 1 in 4. Neighboring New Jersey which is not testing nowhere nearly as much as New York is seeing positive test rates at 4 in 5. We might want to keep an eye on New Jersey considering it has the highest population density out of all the states in the U.S. My assumption is the actual number is five times bigger. Most people show mild symptoms. The numbers are generally those who fall into the 20% who got sick enough to notice. As far as I'm concerned it's too late to stop. Keep yourself as safe as possible until it burns its way through the population. I don't see how you prevent it at this point too many asymptomatic people have it. My assumption is the CDC realizes this and hence why people are being told to stay home and less critically sick. That explains the push for respirators too. Honestly it's not even about the death rate. Currently 15 to 20 percent of cases need hospitalization. That's a lot of beds. Without getting the beds, ventilators, PPE the death rate will go up. They've been pretty transparent and vigilant in New York State about testing and planning resources because there's no choice. Other states are probably two weeks behind. It's honestly going to be a bit of a hot mess. Worldometer says they are at 22k as of today. 12k jump in one day. Edit, actual number is lower now. Don't know what happened. Blame whoever you want. All you need to do is watch Cuomo's press conference today and see that people are still going out like nothing's wrong. No amount of tests or any other shit you want to pin on the Trump admin can stop that level of stupidity. Most Nyers, and the people who work in NYC on a daily basis, are on top of each other multiple times throughout the day. Once this thing was here, there was no stopping it. Everyone needs to stop pointing fingers, be vigilant and do the right thing now. Also as someone who lives in New York and despises Cuomo, the guy is hands down doing the best job right now. That's the type of shit we need. Not de Blasio on TV blaming Trump and doing nothing.